spread the peace give the love and love the love that is your destination i love you i love you like anything infinite times from the bottom of my heart i want to see all my children in liberation with the fragrance of eternity and joyful faces cheerful faces i don't like to see the depressive faces of my kids i want to see all the people in the total world with all the time with the eternal joy and with the eternal happiness i love you so much we have to eradicate the wars from our world we have to bring lot of love and harmony and um, so what baba mentioned love and service i also continue what baba mentioned love and service love the love and give the service to the entire world without any discretion that is all of our responsibility this 2013 year a special year vedic calendar mentioned this is a vijay nama samvatsaram this year for victory victorious year so i am expecting victory for all the people the victory on the mind troubling minds and victory in their all kinds of the problems and sorrows and all of those things so i was here told by thousands and thousands of people in our entire tour depression they are taking depression medications and they have no interest in anything some people want to commit suicides and depression uh, rate is growing day by day like anything love is the greatest weapon uh, anything can bend in front of the love so if people really realized they have to give first love only in our world i was told by so many people here also in this country mother we have everything except what you are giving for us that is lack in the world so we need you like anything they told uh, so without you are asking i have to give my love no need to ask me that's my responsibility to love this world welcome to our fifth yearly interview with holy woman ama shri karunamai the andhra pradesh indian avatar talks about the special significance of this year 2013 she says this year is the year for victory in more ways than one welcome to soul church this interview was recorded in the united states in the summer of 2013 What a pleasure this is once again. This is our fifth formal interview here at this great satsang in Cleveland, Ohio. It is the year 2013. Our beloved Amma, do you have a special message for us for this auspicious year of 2013? What is your message for us? Embodiment of divine souls, my most beloved sweet children. I love you infinite times from the bottom of my heart. There is no conditions for this love. It is unconditional. I love you like anything. This 2013 year is a special year. Vedic calendar mentioned this is a Vijay Nama Samvatsaram. This year for victory, victorious year. So I am expecting victory for all the people the victory on the mind troubling minds and victory in their all kinds of the problems and sorrows and all of those things and i want to see great progress in our world in peace in eternity and also in harmony and love we have to eradicate the wars from our world we have to bring lot of love and harmony and um, so what baba mentioned love and service i also continue what baba mentioned love and service love the love and give the service to the entire world without any discretion that is all of our responsibility amma you mentioned troubled minds and frequently during your retreats and during your visits with us you mention also that people are very depressed Is this more of a problem today than it has been in previous years? Are people more depressed today? Are they troubled more in their mind today than before? Yes, last year December when I have been uh, last year November and I have been to 
Gujarat, uh, Gujarat is uh, mentioned depression and lot of people they told mother before we have not this depression when more money comes, more facilities comes, more opportunities comes, more problems also comes in the life that is the cause for our depression. I was told by so many Gujaratis in Gujarat program. So I was here told by thousands and thousands of people in our entire tour depression. They are taking depression medications and they have no interest in anything. Some people want to commit suicides and depression uh, rate is growing day by day like anything. So nobody never see that, uh, so just uh, doctors are going through the medications and from the bird view it was growing like anything. Depression is nothing but our unsuccess. It is the mental problem. Uh, it is a, like, a totally psychological uh, pain. So they have to meditate every day or they have to pray in their faith. It does not matter whatever they believe in Jurassians in their faith and Christians in their faith, Catholics in their faith, Islam people in their faith, Indians in their faith. They have to do prayers and meditations and spiritual practices that is the best medication for mental depression. Thank you for explaining that and as you talk about meditation, your chief message is said to be for us to achieve higher levels of consciousness through the practice of meditation. Do you mean that can people can actually become self-realized through meditation? Definitely. Meditation is the greatest uh, spiritual achievement in the life. Make the mind and the karma indriyas, jnana indriyas, we can make silence in meditation. Through the silence you have entered into the mahamauna, that is the absolute silence. Through that silence people enter into the absolute samadhi state. 121 minutes without any thoughts when you are in the total bliss, you are in Samadhi state. Meditation opens the doors of Samadhi. People attain Self-Realization through meditation, not only through meditation, through Karma Yoga, selfless service and also Bhakti Yoga, devotional path and also knowledge path. All these paths are same to lead the uh, absolute truth to attain self-realization. And for a lot of people who hear the term self-realization over and over again, maybe they don't really understand what it means. How would you define for us what self-realization is? Totally, I-ness will be eradicated. Uh, there is no identification of egoism at all. No uh, desires and negativity. All the six enemies are totally burnt in the life and they become so pure and blemishless living like Jesus and Baba and all the people how they are helping this world that is um, the highest goal of the uh, divinity to attain truth and help the world. And does self-realization come and go or does it come and last forever? It is their loss forever. Mm -hmm. So when people say I was I felt self-realization for a minute my meditation or for an hour after my meditation, it sounds like they're not talking about the genuine self-realization because what you're saying is it comes and lasts forever. Yeah, it is be, it is there all the time. You are you are that. You are that absolute. That is the experience. So that's the goal we all want yes. to achieve through yes. the practice of meditation yes. and I'm sure also leading a virtuous life. <laughs> yes. All of that's important. Yes. Yeah. Um, one more question about meditation. You say in prayer we are talking to God, but in meditation we are listening to God. A very important distinction. But there are many of us who do not listen well. We do not hear well. How can we hear better when we are in meditation? Uh, when you are in meditation, you heard the beautiful, all the inner sounds, the flute sound, the warm sound, all the dasavidanadas from the ins inside the body. You can listen the divine music of silence within you. So you can hear that. Yes, it is absolutely uh, incredible. It's, there is no words to express that. There is no language to expre explain about that. You have to experience that. It vibrates all the time in your heart. 
well, I've meditated many years, but I'm still waiting for that experience. I don't know if I get a, if I fail the class or if I'm, I get a C, but so far, I think it's a common practice for many of us to try very hard to listen to quiet our minds, but to, to hear God, to hear the music, to hear those chimes and vibrations so far, it eludes many of us. And I'm sure your message is don't be discouraged, keep doing it. Uh, Ted Sun Path is a selfless service, Karma Yoga. And he got uh, God's darshan, Baba's darshan. What else you need, son? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's another way of expressing it. And I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that right from your lips very, very clearly as my purpose. Ama, some people become what I've learned to understand are jivan muktas. They become self-realized 24-7. Do you confer this on individuals who follow your teachings? How do people become jivan mukta? Jivan Mukta is a liberated soul, liberation. Liberation means liberation from anger. Some people all the time uh, with anger. So the liberation from there is no place for anger in their life. So they are so peaceful, quiet, calm. That is the uh, liberation from anger. So they are in a state of equanimity. Yes, equanimity. Nothing bothers them. No. So. It, they are watching, uh, like, so sometimes, no, you are sitting in front of a river, watching the river, uh, river was going. You are not that river, you are watching that, witnessing that. Mm. So then, anything is never going to bother you there. So you are that witness, absolute consciousness. So that, that is Jivan Mukta. There is no desires in Jivan Mukta. Uh, there is no all of these uh, six enemies in Jivan Mukta. He's so pure, desireless, witnessing this play of the world. You express that very beautifully. And you use the word liberation. So tell me, Ama, is liberation different from self-realization or is it the same? Liberation is uh, different from self-realization. Liberation from all the enemies. Then there are so many higher orbits to climb to attain the supreme truth. That is the final destination of attain your sin. Mm, that's a very important distinction that I never considered before. I always thought liberation was self-realization, but I see that difference. And when you're not, when you're self-realized, you experience the peace, but when you're liberated, you're free from any attack, any anger, yes. any jealousy, yes. any of the temporal if temptations. If people prizes you, if people criticizes you, same. Yeah. So gradually, there are so many higher orbits there. Mm -hmm. We are climbing that higher orbits of the purity. Finally, I am absolute. I am divisionless. Mm -hmm. I myself is independent. I myself is timeless wisdom. That experience comes in your heart. So you must be aware of people who become self-realized in this lifetime. Are there very many people who become self-realized and liberated in this lifetime? There are so many liberated souls I saw even in here also. Even here? Here. So they are so desireless, pure. They have no negativity, no anger. So they are ready to give up even their lives also for other people's. So much sacrifice, so many beautiful souls in our country here, all over the world. All these 19 years I was traveling all over the world. I saw in this beautiful human garden, so many liberated souls, so many Jivan Muktas also in family life. Really? Yes. So that's, you're really enticing us to continue to shoot for higher and higher levels, and there are many levels as you just suggested too. Yes, i inspiring all these. So what might be the next level after liberation? You're talking about self-realization and then liberation, and what might be the next level be for people? First we need liberation, mm -hmm. then finally self-realization. Okay, okay. So, so there's a big order of work for all of us who want to be free of the shackles of our lives. Yeah, actually it is not a big task. We have to eradicate the tininess, that is the big task. To eradicate the... Dis I -ness. The I-ness, the i yes. Egoism, yeah. that is the main problem. If there is no identification of i -ness, 
then liberation comes automatically. So you're telling me that there are people walking around this city and other parts of the world who are free of their ego? Yes, so many people are there. I saw in my all these uh, 20 years of my tour, so many beautiful, beautiful souls, extremely beautiful souls, amazing to see them. We can see the heights of Himalayas, but we can't see the heights of their hearts. They're so height. Oh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. As a, here's a question that's been um, challenging me for a long time, because thanks to Bob Sun, our, our, our fortunate friend here in Cleveland who first brought you to our city five years ago, Bob Burroughs, uh, I'm very familiar with not only the emphasis that you put on meditation, but the amount of meditation we see you do. We just came out of several hours of meditation with 40 or 50 of us, and you were sitting right among us in complete meditation. As a young woman, you spent 10 years or more meditating day after day in the forest. As an avatar, why do you meditate? Why do you need to meditate? We know it's not to attain peace because you are already the embodiment of peace. So why do you meditate? My meditation is not for my Ines sake, Tetson. Okay. My meditation physically, I was in my Supreme Sun and watching all this universe. I want to help the people through my silence or through my inner wisdom to elevate so many divine souls, so many liberated souls from their levels to the highest consciousness level. So that's so why. So that work is inside work, not outside work. So that's why, so you, what you're doing is different than what we're doing, what we're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, our eyes are closed, but that's the only similarity. <laughs> um, does your body require warmth and shelter? Do you get hungry? Do you have the normal needs that us humans that, that, uh, who aren't avatars have? Actually, not necessary of taking too much uh, food and sleep and all those things. Mm -hmm. So, Panchabhutas are under our control, under our control. And while we're on this subject, just one more question or two. You are an avatar. I've introduced you that way for many t uh, years now. I understand that there are various levels of avatars. There's a Puna avatar the, who uh, knows so much. There are other avatars who have other distinct, unique gifts. Can you tell us more about avatars? Do you know every detail of the people's lives who sit before you in meditation, for example? What is that As an avatar, do you know people's lives, their thoughts, what their goals are? Yes. You do? Yes. And do you know this all the time about everyone or just when you hear people talk to you from their hearts? No necessary to talk with me. I can know without talking them also what they need, what they uh, get from, what they need. I can help them without talking also. And you have a, a wonderful devotee who works with you on the tour every year and she asked me this question to ask you and it's, it's kind of a, a silly question. As an avatar, Ama, how is it up there? <laughs> How is it as high as our spiritual embodiments take us? What is it like to be an avatar? It descended all the way, countless, countless light years of the distance. It's not from galaxies, not like that. Countless gazillions and gazillions of the light years comes from the light of all the lights. That's the light. I comes to you all the way. Mm. to uplift you, to help you, to love you from so many levels. Some people asking from health level, some people emotional level, from people spiritual level, some people only just the materialistic problems, some people only seeking for spiritual problems, some people are seeking for liberation, some people are seeking for only salvation. There's so many levels there. I can understand that, having been a journalist and reporting on the needs of so many people over the decades. When you look at us, Ama, what is it that you see? We are opening so many bondages with our eyes only. Mm -hmm. 
just with the looks, touch, doing all those things. And one of your followers wanted me to ask you, since we now know that we're not the only planet in the cosmos, that there are so many planets, presumably with so many forms of life, why did you choose to come to this one? This is my creation. I <laughs> love my creation like anything. Yeah, so I'm traveling uh, in my estate. You're traveling in your state? Estate. My estate. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. I'm so happy you said that. This is your creation. Is there other forms of life like ours on other planets in your creation? So this is only here, the creation planets, okay. all the okay. lives. Some people who say that they are self-realized don't always act that way. They seem to have deep mystical experiences. Sometimes they have occult powers. But I'm confused when some of these people don't show necessarily high levels of love within themselves. Why aren't they transformed into great saints if they're self-realized? Everyone have, every individual have their own, own um, circles, limitations. So some people got some spiritual things, some people have some spiritual powers. When the Kundalini comes to the second chakra, people got eight Siddhis. Mm. Some people have the Siddhis and they, some people don't like to show the Siddhis, some people show the Siddhis. They still have some tendencies from before, perhaps, yes. some, some lesser tendencies maybe. What is the tendencies you are asking? Well, do people who uh, seem to be self-realized on some levels but sometimes show a lack of love on other levels, are they mary maybe carrying over these other tendencies? They, they haven't fully yet acquired all the higher tendencies? Really, if anyone realized, uh, you have to realize that. You have to realize that. Uh -huh. According to their maturity, love, no? Yeah. We, we smell that. But you understand what I'm saying. I hope I'm saying it clearly enough that sometimes we encounter when we're traveling and interviewing people those who really seem to be self-realized in most respects. But sometimes they seem to be absent love or as much love as we'll find in many of the people here, for example. Divinity is love only. Divinity is love only. So Baba, how Baba loves people love? Yeah. Incredible love. <laughs> So when Sai Baba said, love, love, love is all there is, yes. then, then <laughs> if people seem to be self-realized but lack the love, it may not be genuine self-realization. I but can't say anything about that. <laughs> 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 Just I love this world like anything. Yeah. You do say over and over again to love the love, and I find that to be one of the most charming statements and original statements about love I've ever heard because that's a difficult concept, but it's a very important one. Love the love. If you love people, you get abundance of happiness by yourself, by giving something through love. Giving means not give some articles or not, I mean. So just the love gives anything, even life also we can give for people's sake. We can give time, we can give love, we can give so many activities for people's sake because of the love. So because divinity is love only. So when you really love the love, you are ready to do any seva to the mankind. So that's why love is so sweet. Any sweets are nothing in front of love. Mm -hmm. Honey or sweets or anything, nothing in front. Any elixirs are nothing in front of love. Love is the greatest weapon. Uh, anything can bend in front of the love. So if people really realized they have to give first love only. In our world, I was told by so many people here also in this country, Mother, we have everything except what you are giving for us that mm. is lack in the world. So we need you like anything they told. Uh, so without you are asking, I have to give my love. No need to ask me. That's my responsibility to love this world. And you're telling other people to do as you do and to give love themselves to others. The Kali Yuga ended in December of 2012. This is the Satya Yuga, but many of us don't see many signs that 
there's a difference yet. We don't see many signs of the arrival of the Kali Yuga, of the Satya Yuga yet. When will we start to see signs of the of the Satya Yuga? Satya Yuga, Kali Yuga, can you say? When our majority of people are sincere, kind, love, sweet, not deceiving each other, loving each other, lot of harmony in the society, love in the society, that is golden age. When people are, uh, most of the people are with um, negative thoughts and negative attitude, deceiving each other, and this is called the Kali Yuga. If people who born in the golden ages also, with the negative attitude, they born in the other golden age, but they are not in the golden age. Oh. They are not in the golden age. For example, when Krishna time, lot of people are there, they never believe Krishna. Duryodhana never believe Krishna. So many people never believe Krishna. Mm -hmm. They are with Krishna, but they are not in that golden time. I see. They are in Kali Yuga. They can be part of it, but not be it. Yes. If so suppose we are in this Kali Yuga, when you are honest, sincere, pure, uh, you are thinking always about others to do good, then you are in golden age. You are in golden age. So people are already in the golden age who yes. act that way. Yes. Even during the Kali Yuga, they could have been in that golden age. Yes. If they would have lived from their hearts. Yes. I see. So what you're saying is as more and more people learn to live from their hearts, We'll start to see more of the Satya yes, Yuga. Yes, a lot of people are seeking for that now. Mm -hmm. They understand the emptiness of this worldly life and they are seeking for something more better life, what to give us uh, really peace to them. So they are expecting that peace. Very good. The mantras you teach us, you are in Sanskrit and many times you use uh, Vedas and some of the ceremonies you perform like Abhishekam yesterday, the homas tomorrow, an eight fire homa tomorrow, are things that we associate with the Hindu religion, Amma, and yet you say that you are beyond religion. What does it mean to be beyond religion? What is religion? What is religion? I guess the practice of what other people tell us are the laws of God, maybe? I'm not quite sure what the definition of religion is. For all religions, the base is love only. Love only. So, Homa ceremony, why we are performed tomorrow, that is for universal peace. So, we are uh, born in so many ingredients, so many 1008 uh, varieties of the herbal powders. Mm -hmm. It uh, purifies the total atmosphere from the nuclear pollutions and bacteria pollutions, lot of virus. So many viruses are combined with other other virus, a new virus is born. Mm. That virus is caused for so many diseases for people. So this smoke emanates from the fire ceremony. It eradicates all this bacteria, virus. So that's a, that is fire ceremony. It is a social responsibility. I see. Yes. It is a social responsibility to purify the Mother Earth, Panchabhutas, all the things. So, there are some mantras like Om, Gayatri Mantra, Ganesha Mantra. So, people need not uh, do that mantras. They have just to sit and meditate and they have to pray. The vibrations of mantras are going to grant them so much solace and peace and the negative vibrations are eradicated from the body. So, those of us who are unfamiliar with what a Homa is, if we just show up and be present, yes, open our hearts and be present, yes, we'll will be receiving everything that we are tended to receive. Yes, it is very powerful. In line with that question, one other question. Some Westerners who are new to you are Christian. We're in a, we're in a Unitarian church in Cleveland right now. They are confused by some of the ceremonies that seem to be part of the Hindu religion. What should we tell people who are new to you who ask about Hinduism? Is this Hinduism? Do they need to become a Hindu? It is very unique, no? It is very unique. What we are doing, the prayers for universal peace sake only. It's not any religion, it's not bond people like anything. It's love. So we are doing for the uh, Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu, one of the mantra. That means, let the total universe must be in peace. 
and some other mantras asatoma sadgamaya so all the total world we are believing only the untruth we have to go towards the truth that is the meaning of that <laughs> mantra so is is there any religion there no, no. there is no religion tamasoma jyotirgamaya tamas means uh, dark forces so if any dark forces in the mankind we have to eradicate all the dark forces like anger greed jealousness everything we have to go to the absolute light that is the meaning it is very unique no is the prayer for all the people sake in the world yeah mrutyarma amrutangamaya that means mrutyu is selfishness if people are all the time leading a selfish life is it is like a death so selflessness is selflessness is the immortality so selflessness gives them absolute bliss peace happiness and boundless um, uh, tranquility of the consciousness so we have to attain that level so that's why these prayers are very unique these are not any ism or uh, <laughs> it is not like that not a religion and no. i'm so glad i asked that question because many of us are in deep ignorance when it comes no, to no it is not ignorance yeah. no uh, i make them understand yes you do very very well and there's one new person here who asked the question that i thought well this is this is an interesting question and sometimes i appreciate it when a person who's brand new never heard of ama shri kunamai and they're here for the first time this woman's come from california to visit with you this weekend she said if you get a chance to ask ama any question would you please ask her this one what is the origin of the universe the origin of the universe is love it isn't primal elements it isn't uh, gases and it is matter. love it is love <laughs> from the love the total creation comes and the second question would be where does that love come from and you just said from what's the origin of the uh, of the initial love of the first love what's the origin of that with the love you have to do all the things no mm -hmm. if anybody do anything in the world with the love only people are doing suppose we are giving some food uh, so seva to people because of love we are doing that when we are helping anyone with the love we are doing that the creation also comes with the self love of the divinity almighty so it is formless it is absolute divisionless absolutely independent and it comes from the self love of yes. the divinity yes who just created expanded yes. love yes it is uh, is beyond thinking it's beyond <laughs> expression yeah. there is no words in any language in the world to explain that well here's an even tougher question about beyond language where does maya fit in was the universe never really created at all or do we believe that there is a creator who created this element of maya this is from the same maya person maya means absolutely uh, the ainess of the human body the the ainess is all the time that ego is the ego is a overflowing from the mind that is maya so that when the anyone have the body and the body feeling mind feeling all the time with egoistic thoughts that is maya when that maya was gone there is no creation you are seeing everything is only the light and the love just a couple of questions left and from the person who wanted to know um why you incarnated on this planet and we talked about that she also wanted to know does your incarnation affect not just this planet but the whole universe yes i was enveloping the total cosmos so your presence the vibrations the love is felt limitlessly everywhere yes that and is divinity and, and and on this topic i'm always curious when physicists astrophysicists go on television and they talk to reporters and they say the same thing we only know 4% of the known universe what is the rest of the universe ama the consciousness the consciousness tripadasya amrutam divi what you are seeing in the cosmos 1% 1/4 only visible the planets cosmos galaxy and all the things but 3/4 is not visible so the consciousness is all enveloping it's beyond description beyond mind 
uh, science and all the things you know you have argumentations you have mind is working there when it is go beyond the mind then you are experiencing the truth and bliss within yourself beautiful and do you interact with the different species throughout the whole universe yes and no we'll need to have a second thought about that <laughs> <laughs> and, and and will we someday have a clear understanding of what's impossible for us to understand today will we no matter how can Ted be experienced that? <laughs> One day you promised that I can become Jivan Mukta. So if I realize myself and get to liberation, will I have a. Am I destined? Are all of us destined as we grow to our spiritual Atma level? Yeah, you will get Jivan Mukta state definitely, liberation from all kinds of these uh, six enemies and uh, anger, greed, jealousy, everything. You are already liberated so much and um, you will attain your Supreme Self. In that highest state, you are one with the entire cosmos, one with the entire universe. And that's a promise I understand for each and every one of us in the world today? Yes. Without fail? Yes. We all make that? Yes. We all get there? Yes. It's just a matter of time? Yes. Maturity. And two last questions. What is important to know when we're raising children, Mama? It's so difficult. Understanding the universe is difficult, but raising children is even more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Your questions are ups and downs now, going here, cosmos, <laughs> creation. <laughs> uh, love, son. If mother gives proper love, father gives proper love, if the low density is more and more, the external uh, outside influence is not influence on them much. So love them more. Mm -hmm. And we have to give you a proper guidance to them in the schools and all the things. Then we can grow the children. Uh, we have to put a good seeds in their mind, uh, very good seeds in their mind. I'm not speaking about the spiritual and humanism. Mm -hmm. service, love, all those things. I apologize for going from the cosmos to babies, <laughs> but these are questions that I ask others to kindly give me to ask you because each year I'm always amazed how interesting these questions are. So the final question for Amashri Kurunamai, often you give off the fragrance of roses, of jasmine, of other precious fragrances, what does it mean? Where does it come from and what does it mean? Sometimes you can be a block away and people can smell the rose fragrance of your presence. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, any fragrances are nothing in, fra in front of the fragrance of peace. The real peace, it is within you. You have to experience that uh, fragrance of the eternal peace, eternal joy. So then all these fragrances, any beauties are nothing in front of the divine beauty. So you have to experience that divine beauty, experience that divine eternal bliss and peace within you. The peace is the real fragrance. Other fragrance, jasmine fragrance, rose flower fragrances, other fragrances are, they are nice, but in front of this never ending fragrance of eternal peace, Wherever you are going, you are carrying this peace and spreading this uh, fragrance of peace everywhere. I am expecting from this world, let my children have to be so pure inside. They have to burn all the, uh, any, any kind of this um, six enemies, anger or anything, smaller, smaller weeds, burn all the weeds with the divine love and they have to elevate from one orbit to other orbit to experience the eternal joy and peace and spread the peace, give the love and love the love, that is your destination. I love you. I love you like anything infinite times from the bottom of my heart. I want to see all my children in liberation with the fragrance of eternity and joyful faces, cheerful faces. I don't like to see the depressive faces of my kids. 
I want to see all the people in the total world with all the time, with the eternal joy and with the eternal happiness. I love you so much. Amashri Kurunamai, thank you very much yet again. Uh, no necessary, Ted Sun. Thanks between mother and son. I love you so much. Jake Kurunamai. Love you, son. Love you. Love you, children. <laughs>